Hi, I am Elephant. Today let's see the anime named Farming Life in Another World. In other anime, the main character fights and subdues the demon king in another world, and later conquers the whole world. But in this anime, the main character builds a farm after he travels to another world, spending his whole day studying farming. Most strangely, he unexpectedly attracts a large group of beauties to be his wives, including a vampire, an elf, and even an angel of heaven. So how can he achieve this? Let's start today's recap. The main character is named Hiraka Machio, who lives a miserable life. He is not only betrayed but also suffers from an incurable disease. After he dies, he comes to heaven. At this time, the god tells him that all this is a mistake of the god, and the punishment that originally belonged to the evil person is mistakenly placed on Hiraku. So the god offers to compensate Hiraku, and he will agree to whatever Hiraku wants. Hiraku thinks for a while and proposes that he wants to farm, because of his poor interpersonal relationships, plus he often watches programs about agriculture when he was sick, he keeps fantasizing that after recovering from illness, he can go to a place where there are few people to be a farmer and live a leisurely life. After that, the god blesses Hiraku with a healthy body and an omnipotent farming tool. By the time Hiraku wakes up, he is in a large forest. Hiraku retains his previous memories, and he immediately summons the omnipotent farming tool that the god said. He can't wait to start farming the land. By using this omnipotent farming tool, he can farm without consuming physical strength, and turn hard land into fertile soil. Immediately afterwards, Hiraku finds a large tree in the forest and uses it as his future stronghold. He has to deal with the water source before that, but he searches in the forest for a long time and can't find a river, so he decides to dig a well. As he thinks in his mind, the omnipotent farming tool turns into a shovel. He digs for hours with this shovel, and finally finds the water source. Now he starts to build his own house. The first step is to cut down the tree, and Hiraku turns the omnipotent farming tool into an axe. With just a little force, he directly cuts down the tree. Later, he turns the omnipotent farming tool into a machete and begins to deal with the large tree he just cut down. This omnipotent farming tool is very magical, and cutting trees with this machete is easier than cutting vegetables. Hiraku easily cuts trees into the shape he wants. He wants to start building a house when he notices that the sun has set, so he decides to dig a hole under this huge tree to rest. In this world, there are two moons at night, so he can see clearly at night. Hiraku then turns the omnipotent farming tool into the file and makes much cutlery for himself. Early the next morning, he turns the omnipotent farming tool into a magnifying glass and uses the principle of the sun's focusing to build fires for himself. Later, he clears up the surrounding environment. Although he will not get tired when using the omnipotent farming tool, his physical strength will still be consumed when he is not using it. After a short while, he gets hungry. At this time, a fierce demon rabbit in the forest attacks him, and Hiraku hits the demon rabbit's head with a hoe in a panic, after which the rabbit's head immediately turns into a pile of soil. Fortunately, the body the body of the demon rabbit is still there, and he uses the demon rabbit meat plus the fire that was built not long ago to make a barbecue to fill his stomach. After filling his stomach, Hiraku wants to go to the loo, so he uses the omnipotent farming tool to make himself a loo, which contains an exhaust vent, a storage slot, and a toilet. He is finally able to go to the toilet in this hidden environment. Then he starts making his own farmland. As long as he uses this omnipotent farming tool to cultivate, he doesn't need to sow the seeds, and the seeds of the vegetables in his mind will automatically emerge from the ground. Besides, these vegetables grow very fast. In order to prevent his field from being destroyed by wild beasts, he builds a fence around the field and digs a deep pit in the ground outside the fence. While these vegetables are growing, Hiraku fills his stomach with demon rabbits and wild boars around him. A few days later, his farmland is finally tidied up, and he builds himself a small house. As Hiraku adjusts to farming life, he encounters two wounded wolves. Out of kindness, Hiraku gives them the wild boar he has collected in the past few days. At this time, Hiraku discovers that the demon wolf which has been pregnant is about to give birth, so he gives up his house to them. At night, he worries that the demon wolf will be frozen, so he also builds fires in front of the door. Soon after, the demon wolf gives birth to several little demon wolves. Hiraku again takes out a lot of wild boar to feed them. The demon wolf feels the kindness of Hiraku and decides to live here and become Hiraku's partner. The house becomes the wolf's room, and Hiraku builds himself a bigger house. At this moment, the god wants to see how Hiraku is doing, and when he finds Hiraku in the forest, he finds it a vexed issue. It turns out that the forest where Hiraku is located is called Death Forest, and it is full of monsters and dangers. The god once again arranges Hiraku in the wrong place. 
Right now Hiraku is happily running his own farm, becoming more and more skilled and making more and more tools. In order to thank the god for bringing him a new life, he also makes a statue of the god. In addition to growing vegetables, Hiraku has started planting fruit trees, but the fruit trees usually take several years to mature, so he plans to continue expanding the farm, and he finds a river not far from the stronghold. Under the protection of the demon wolf, he successfully makes the water of the river diverted to his stronghold using the omnipotent farming tool. Later, he expands his farmland again, planting canola flowers, wheat, and sugarcane. Time passes day by day, and winter is coming. In order to keep warm, he decides to make some clothes out of wild animal skins. But unprocessed wild animal skins are very smelly and easy to spoil. Just as he is about to give up, a new member comes to his farm, a giant spider. This spider is a friend of the demon wolf, and it can spit silk to make some fabric and can also make warm coats out of wild animal skins, which is simply a natural tailor. So the spider also settles down on the farm, and with the clothes made by the spider, plus the vegetables and food hoarded during this time, they can finally survive the winter. It snows heavily outside the house this winter, and Hiraku spends most of his time in the house. Gradually, he begins to feel a little lonely and hope for someone to talk to him. In the spring of the following year, the little demon wolves grow up, and they go deep in the forest to find their mates. The spider also gives birth to many small spiders. Hiraku feels more and more lonely, and now with so many companions, Hiraku can only temporarily put aside his emotions and work harder to run his farm. On this day, the love belonging to Hiraku finally arrives. He finds a wounded little girl under a tree near the farm, and when he approaches the little girl, the girl unexpectedly bites Hiraku's neck. When she finishes sucking blood, her body grows. It turns out that the girl is a vampire. Just then, the wolves attack her, and the vampire becomes smaller again. The vampire quickly explains that sucking blood is only a means to restore her physical strength, and she actually has no malice. Hiraku actually didn't feel any discomfort when he was sucked blood by the girl just now, which should be related to the healthy body given to him by the god. Hiraku looks at the poor vampire and decides to save her, so he offers to let the vampire suck blood. He also brings the vampire back to his farm. It is the first time that the vampire has seen vegetables from the earth, and after eating a bite of tomatoes, she immediately expresses her amazement that there are such delicious vegetables in the world. Hiraku is very happy to be praised, so he takes the vampire on a tour of his farm and shares his fruit. Hiraku has never been so happy. At night, Hiraku learns that the vampire is named Ru, a pharmacist who specializes in herbs. Because she developed a precious formula, she was hunted down by the nobles. Later, she heard that this forest has precious plants, so she entered this forest. Hiraku doesn't want to stay lonely for the rest of his life, so he plucks up the courage and invites Ru to live here and live with him in the future. Ru misunderstands that Hiraku is proposing to her, and in her opinion, living together means to be a partner. Hiraku gets blushed immediately after hearing Ru say that he was proposing, but he insists on his idea. Perhaps this is called love at first sight. Not only does Hiraku cast magic, but he also runs a farm in a dangerous forest with a group of wolves. And Ru is also attracted to the handsome and mysterious man Hiraku. What's more, Hiraku's blood is the best she has ever sucked, so she agrees to Hiraku's request. In this way, Ru becomes Hiraku's first companion. Maybe they don't know much about love in their mind, and they only know that when they are with each other, they are happy and feel comfortable, which is enough. Ru casts magic to make the toilet lit, so it can be seen clearly at night. She also helps Hiraku collect salts, and they can finally enjoy more delicious food. Just when they are slowly perfecting the farm, the spider in charge of guarding issues an early warning. It turns out that an angel girl has been caught, which is exactly the same as when Ru was caught. Hiraka rescues the girl, and the angel girl heals her body with just a simple magic. At this time, Hiraku discovers that Ru intends to escape quietly, and the angel girl immediately heads to capture Ru when she sees her, only to be beaten up by the demon wolves. Later, Hiraku takes the angel girl back to the farm, and then learns the truth during the chat. It turns out that the angel girl is named Tia. As I mentioned before, Ru is a pharmacist, and she blew up the houses of nobles while researching strange potions. The angel girl was invited by the nobles of the city to capture Ru back. Tia is curious about the relationship between Hiraku and Ru, and Ru shyly says that Hiraku is her honey bun. From their conversation, it seems that Tia and Ru actually have a good relationship. At this time, Ru suddenly invites Tia to live here, and as for why Ru wants Tia to stay, it is because she feels so tired to help on the farm alone. 
After that, Rue takes Tia to visit the whole farm. During then, she introduces many vegetables that Tia does not know, and asks Tia to help harvest spinach. Hiraku invites Tia to taste the spinach he has grown, and Tia is surprised. It is the first time she has eaten such fresh vegetables. What makes Tia most happy is that she eats the strawberry for the first time, and she is completely conquered by the sweet and sour taste. Tia feels a sense of accomplishment during today's farm work. And finally, at Rue's strong request, Tia also decides to stay here. After Tia joins them, the farm is perfected more smoothly. Tia and Ru cast magic to help Hiraku construct the farm, and they perfect many of the farm's facilities during this time. As time passes by, Tia hopes that Hiraku can grow more strawberries. But Hiraku says that because of the lack of manpower on the farm, he will be too busy if he increases the planting area. At this time, they find several little demon wolves, which turn out to be bred by the demon wolves, and the space of the hut built before is no longer enough. So Hiraku specially builds an area for demon wolves. However, the spider also gives birth to many little spiders. They need to get food from the farm, and the pressure is growing. Tia seems to have thought of something, and she tells Hiraku that she wants to go out. After a short while, Tia takes a group of elven girls to the farm. This group of elves originally lived in the far north, but because of the war, they lost their home and wandered away for many years. Now the farm happens to be short of manpower, so Tia invites them to join the farm. In this way, Hiraku has gained a group of beautiful elven beauties, and incidentally solved the problem of the lack of manpower. With more new members joining, more new houses should be built, so the elven girls start to help build new houses. Though looking weak, the elves actually have very strong power. Soon, a large villa is built. Hiraku is also very happy to see that these beautiful girls can live here with peace of mind. Soon this group of elves is engaged in farming. They are not only industrious but also very smart, and they become familiar with their work in a short time. What surprises Hiraku the most is that this group of elven beauties can even forge iron. And with their help, Hiraku gains the first iron pot. He can't help but feel that the elves can do anything. At this time, an elven beauty reminds him that there is one job they can't do on their own, which is to reproduce. The elves then offer to eat toast, and after obtaining Hiraku's permission, they get to be busy making toast. Soon, the delicious toast is finished. Seeing that there are more and more members coming to his farm, Hiraku asks Ru whose territory here belongs to, and Ru says that this place does not belong to anyone, but in terms of the sphere of influence, it should be considered the territory of the demon king. Hearing this, Hiraku is taken aback, and Ru tells him not to worry, saying that they built this place without the help of the demon king, so to be precise, this is the territory of Hiraku. As time passes by, Hiraku intends to farm as usual. Just then, he finds that the spider has caught a large bee back, which turns out to be the queen bee, and the spider hopes that Hiraku can keep the queen bee on the farm as well. Hiraku then helps the queen bee build a shed, where the queen bee builds her own hive, except for the queen bee with a large size. Other normally attracted worker bees have normal size, otherwise this shed will not be able to accommodate these bees. It seems that soon Hiraku will be able to gain honey. After that, Hiraku starts another job, intending to build a reservoir on his farm to make it easier to irrigate the farmland. He first digs a huge puddle near the farm, and then uses the omnipotent farming tool to solidify the soil to create a canal that will not leak. With the help of the elves, it takes them two days to channel water from distant rivers into the reservoir. Unexpectedly, there is an unexpected gain from this work. Hiraku has gained many ugly strange fish in the reservoir. He grills these strange fish and gives them to Ru and Tia, who were afraid to eat these strange fish from the death forest at first, but they barely eat a bite after they see that Hiraku is okay after eating it. Later, they are immediately overwhelmed by this taste. Other elven beauties also come to eat the food. After that, Hiraku preserves the unfinished strange fish by salting. With the reservoir, Hiraku intends to grow rice of the human world. He is busy doing that with the omnipotent farming tool from day to night, and finally cultivates a rice paddy. He pours water from the reservoir into the rice paddy, and then asks the elves to take off their shoes and step into the rice paddy. After a short while, Hiraku takes some seedlings and begins teaching them how to plant seedlings. The elves are very good at learning, and they quickly master the technique of rice planting. In this way, the cultivation of rice is successfully completed, thanks to the blessing of the omnipotent farming tool, rice is soon grown. With the help of the elves, they quickly harvest rice. Hiraku takes these harvested ears of rice into the house after drying, and then transforms the omnipotent farming tool into a thresher to thresh them. After that, he uses a sieve to filter out the leaves and some impurities, and finally puts them into a stone mortar to remove the husk. Finally, the rice is harvested. Hiraku cooks the rice and makes it into rice balls, which are then filled with dried fish and distributed to the girls present. These girls eat rice for the first time, and they are all overwhelmed by the rare taste. They start to lament that the hard work these days is worth it. 
Hiraka then takes the girls to work in the rice paddy. The elves will cast magic to remove the dirt from their bodies each time they finish working. This frustrates Hiraku, who can't cast magic. Just then, he comes up with the idea of building a bathhouse on the farm. So he draws a drawing of a bathhouse, which shows not only the reservoir, but also a furnace for boiling water. In this way, they can soak in the hot spring inside the bathhouse. After that, they start to work again. Now with new members joining, they can work very fast, and it only takes them a few days to build the bathhouse in the drawing. At this time, Hiraku thinks of a problem, that is, how to deal with the wastewater from bathing. If the wastewater is discharged into the river, it will cause secondary pollution. Tia comes up with a solution, which is to catch a few slimes back. It turns out that in this world, slimes specialize in eating waste products and dead organic matter to purify the environment. So Tia goes out to capture some slimes, and Hiraku builds a pool for slime to purify in the waste waterway. Finally, the bathhouse is completed. Hiraku wanted to teach the girls how to use the bathhouse at first, but the girls directly ask Hiraku to demonstrate it himself. So Hiraku takes off his clothes in front of the girls, leaving only a pair of shorts, and then teaches them how to bathe like humans. He soaks in the pool with hot water, feeling very happy in an instant. Seeing Hiraku enjoying it so much, the girls all take off their clothes and soak in the pool. Hiraku doesn't expect the girls in this world to be so open, and they all have a good day. Soon after, the demon wolf takes back five elven beauties from outside, and these elves are the lost partners of the elves who first came to the farm. Soon, they get used to life on the farm. Now that there are new members joining, they begin to build a new house. The demon wolf leader looks at Hiraka's life and a memory flashes into his mind. It turns out that the demon wolf leader was the legendary hell demon wolf, which was very powerful, and then he met a female wolf who was stronger than him, and they fell in love. Later, the female wolf became pregnant. Unfortunately, they met the king of the forest, the grappler bear. In the battle with the bear, they were injured and lost the ability to forage. Just when they thought they were going to die, they met Hiraku. The demon wolf leader could feel the powerful mana on the omnipotent farming tool of Hiraku, thinking that he was going to be killed, but unexpectedly, Hiraku adopted them and fed them delicious wild boar. What Hiraku doesn't know is that the wild boars he hunted are very terrifying monsters in the forest. And there is another rule in this world, that is, the females of this world are much stronger than males. Seeing that Hiraku has conquered so many females, the demon wolf leader becomes very in awe of Hiraku. With more and more members joining, the existing houses are too small to live in. Hiraku works with others to build a super large villa, where everyone has their own room. The strangest thing is that there are also rooms specially prepared for the elves to reproduce. One day, Hiraku has a new idea, and he intends to make his favorite ingredient, curry. He has already planted special spices for curry in advance, and because of the use of the omnipotent farming tool, plants that cannot grow in snowy areas can still grow successfully. Hiraku introduces Tia and Ru to the main components of curry. Cumin seeds are the main source of the smell, turmeric is the main component of its color, and coriander seeds and coriander are also essential seasonings. At this time, the demon wolves curiously smell the smell of coriander, only to be assailed by it, and they flees immediately. Seeing this, Tia and Ru immediately become interested. When Hiraku collects the ingredients needed to make the curry, Tia and Ru disappear. Someone says that they went to study coriander and intend to make a potion to drive away demons. However, there are also elven beauties who help Hiraku, and during cooking, the smell of curry attracts many beauties nearby. Next, Hiraku plans to prepare a staple food, which is naan, a special food made from flour. This is his favorite thing to eat when eating curry. After a short while, naan and the curry are cooked. Hiraku invites all the girls here to taste the food together, but the naan and the curry look so terrible that the girls hesitate. At the strong request of Hiraku, Ru takes the first bite, and is instantly fascinated by this special food. The other girls begin to taste it, and they are all conquered by this rare delicious food. Soon, the curry is eaten by the group of girls. Hiraku feels a pity that he didn't eat much, but thinking that everyone enjoys the food he made, he is very satisfied. Time flies quickly, and winter is coming. Hiraku begins to prepare supplies for the winter, and the spider makes quilts, while Ru and Tia cast magic to make meat for easy storage. Hiraku does not know how to cast magic, so he can only create a simple refrigerator for storing vegetables with his knowledge of agriculture. At night, he complains to Ru that every time he saw Ru and the others casting magic, he always thinks how good it would be if he could also cast magic, and he feels that everyone is very good, except for himself who can only farm and cook. Unexpectedly, Ru says that in her heart, Hiraku is the best of them who can build a home that makes people feel at ease in a short time, and no one can do it in this chaotic world. Under Ru's comfort, Hiraku feels finally less disappointed. 
Soon, winter has arrived, unlike the past when there was only one person to spend the winter. This time Hiraku is accompanied by a group of beauties. To keep life less boring, Hiraku uses the omnipotent farming tool to make some board games, including Reversi, Chess, and even Mahjong. Surprisingly, the demon wolves can quickly master the rules and become a master of chess. Even learning mahjong quickly, Hiraku is totally no match for them, and it seems that the demon wolves are really smart. In this way, Hiraku and the girls have a very pleasant winter. As the snow fades, spring comes, and the spider sounds the alarm. A giant wyvern appears over Hiraku's farm. Before Hiraku can react, Wyvern spits out a fireball. Tia and Ru team up to cast a barrier to resist it, and the flames set some fields of the farm on fire. Wyvern is a high-level monster, and Tia and Ru are not sure to defeat it. If they fail, the farm built with Hiraku's effort will be completely destroyed. Hiraku is very anxious, he just wants to protect his farm and his new friends. The next moment, he actually has an extra spear in his hand, which is made from the omnipotent tool along with his strong willpower. Hiraku feels full of power and throws the spear directly at the wyvern. The spear pierces its defense and its wings, and Hiraku attacks again, directly piercing its body. Tia and Ru are shocked by Hiraku's strength, who defeats the high-level monster in this world with just two attacks. They find the body of the wyvern, which they guess must have just accidentally passed by their farm, much to the relief of Hiraku. Looking at the body of the wyvern, Hiraku asks, can we eat it? Soon after, Hiraku turns the meat of the wyvern into various food. In this world, the meat of the wyvern is a precious food, and it is rumored that some kings can't try it even with all the resources of the whole country. Ru asks Tia while tasting the wyvern's meat if she can block the attack of Hiraku's spear, and Tia quickly says that it is impossible because Hiraku's attack is beyond her ability to resist. The four great generals of the demonic kingdom have the same idea as Tia. The news of Hiraku's defeat of the wyvern not long ago has spread throughout this world, and after evaluating Hiraku's strength, the four generals find that they are completely no match for him. Right now they are feeling troubled by this strong man who suddenly appears. At this moment, Hiraku looks at the grapes on the farm and comes up with a good idea, which is to make delicious wine. Soon, he prepares containers and various tools for making wine. Now the most important part is to step on the grapes with their feet. Tia and several elven beauties step on the grapes in a barrel under the command of Hiraku, and Tia accidentally falls and sits on top of the grapes, which gives the wine some more special flavor. After some hard work, they gain many barrels of grape juice, and they will gain real wine after the juice ferments. Early the next morning, the spider sounds the alarm. Hiraku finds a girl, and Ru is surprised to see the girl. It turns out that the girl is Flora, Ru's sister, and she heard that the angel Tia had set her eyes on Ru, so she chases her here. Under Ru's explanation, Flora learns that Hiraku is the master of Ru, and not long ago, Hiraku defeated a wyvern. Flora immediately admires Hiraku. Knowing that Flora is Ru's sister, Hiraku warmly invites her to stay, and also treats her to very precious wyvern meat and some delicious food. Flora is conquered by the food, and she decides to return home once in order to settle here for a long time. A month later, Flora arrives at the farm with some maids and two cows. Hiraku is very happy that now he can have milk, with which he can make many milk-related cuisines. Tia sees Flora bringing such a group of servants, and thinks that there are already many members of the other races on the farm. While she is the only one angel, she immediately proposes to Hiraku that she will go out. Soon after, Tia returns to the farm with her people, including angels who specialize in patrolling and lizard men who take manual jobs. On top of that, Tia brings some hens, which means they can gain eggs. As many new members join them, the farm grows larger. Now the farm is more like a village, so Hiraku gathers some of the core members, hoping to give the village a name. Prompted by the spider, Hiraku gains inspiration from the tree in the middle of the village. At night, Hiraku announces that their village is officially named Great Tree Village, and to commemorate the night, Hiraku brings out the wine that has been made not long ago. To the cheers, Hiraku becomes the head of Great Tree Village. This evening, everyone has a lot of fun and shows their passion for this special night. Hiraku is determined that he must protect the villagers in front of him. As time passes by, everyone gradually adapts to their work. One day, the angel in charge of patrolling reports that Bezel, the messenger of the demonic kingdom, has arrived. Bezel comes up with the gift he has prepared, saying that he has come to deliver a message to the Lord here on behalf of the Lord of the Demon King, and he wants to talk to the Lord about the ownership of the land. Hiraku immediately remembers that Ru said that their farm was actually within the Demon King's territory. Hiraku guesses that the Demon King might be trying to ask him to pay taxes, so he immediately offers to hand over 10% of the farm's harvest as a tax if the Demon King will let him live here. Bezel is a little surprised to hear Hiraku's words, but he quickly agrees. Subsequently, the two signs a contract. 
After Bezel leaves, everyone in the village is very happy, and they praise Hiraku for his decision. In the past, the others needed to pay 50% to 60% of the harvest as a tax, and they only need to pay 10% of the harvest in exchange for the protection of the demonic kingdom. Besides, the gift from Bezel is a very precious panacea, which can heal many injuries. Unlike the people having fun in the Great Tree Village, Bezel is a little panicked. It turns out that after learning that Hiraku could easily defeat the wyvern, they had planned to give the land to Hiraku. When he saw the vampire princess and the most powerful angel in the village, as well as the high-level elves and the hell demon wolves, he became more certain of his ideas. Unexpectedly, Hiraku offered to pay taxes and submit to the demon king. Bezel does not dare to disobey Hiraku's words and can only agree to his request. Fortunately, Hiraku was friendly and gave him some specialties before leaving. At this time, Bezel discovers that the cloth used to package the specialty is made of the silk of the demon spider, and legend has it that this demon spider is as powerful as the demon king. Now the people in the demonic kingdom become more and more afraid of Hiraku. At this moment, there are new visitors in the Great Tree Village, a blue dragon and his servants who live in the lair south of the village, and they also saw Hiraku defeat the wyvern before, so they come to show their favor. They specially prepare a sword as a greeting gift. The blue dragon transforms into a human form and salutes Hiraku. His name is Drain, and he is from the dragon clan. Hearing that Drime is his neighbor, Hiraku prepares delicious wine to entertain Drime. Drime is conquered by the wine, which contains the body smell of beauties of all races. After talking to each other, they become good friends, and Hiraku gives Drime many apples before he leaves. Soon after, a group of beast men comes to the village. They live on the mountain east of the village, and they come this time to form a good relationship with the village. Because this group of beast men does not know about etiquette, they do not bring a greeting gift when they arrive, and they were almost treated as enemies by the villagers of the Great Tree Village. Fortunately, Hiraku doesn't care about this, and the group of guests enjoys delicious food under his arrangement. After eating and drinking enough, the beast men say the reason for this visit. It turns out that they live by trading with nearby human villages and the supplies they gained by hunting and mining. However, because of some disputes, their trade is now at a standstill. Recently, the demonic kingdom announces the location of their new territory, the Great Tree Village. This group of beastmen intends to befriend the village and become its new trading partners. The beastmen can provide many items and materials made of ore, which are needed by the Great Tree Village, and it just so happens that the beastmen lack food. So the two villages reach a trade agreement, and the Great Tree Village exchanges food for these materials. Not long after, the day of the first trading comes, and Hiraku intends to go to trade himself, but is stopped by Ru, who says that the leader will easily be in danger if he rushes to the territory of the others. So they draw lots, and in the end, it is Tia who delivers the goods. Drime has always come for drinks since he drank delicious wines. When he hears that the Great Tree Village needs to deliver goods to other villages, he immediately offers to help deliver the goods himself. It originally needed 10 days to arrive at the Beastman's territory, and with Drime's help, the goods are delivered in less than a day. Soon, Tia completes the trade and returns to the village. Hiraku's crops are so popular that they are quickly sold out. Meanwhile, the beastmen propose to arrange for 20 beastmen to settle in the Great Tree Village, all of whom are said to be female. Hiraku thinks about the fact that his village is indeed short of manpower, but he feels that there are too many females in the village, so he puts forward an additional condition, which is that several young males should also be arranged to move into the village. Later, the beast men send a group of cute and sexy beautiful beast girls, and they do send some males according to the condition, but these males are actually very young. Hiraku feels troubled, but the beautiful elven girls are very excited, thinking that in another 5 to 10 years, these little boys will grow into adults, so that the elves might be able to reproduce. A few days later, Hiraku hears the sound of fighting near the village, and the angel in charge of patrolling tells him that it is Super Warcraft Grappling Bear and Bloody Viper fighting nearby. Hiraku would have been scared before, but now he has adjusted to his power and has one thought in his mind. That is, can he eat the two monsters? Hiraku uses his omnipotent farming tool to kill the two monsters in one blow, which shocks the villagers. Soon, Hiraku makes delicious bear and snake meat with his cooking skills. The villagers eat it happily, and they admire Hiraku more. Soon after, a group of dwarves comes to express their desire to live in the Great Tree Village. It turns out that they heard that there is a super delicious red wine in the Great Tree Village, and the dwarves like to drink alcohol so much. They can brew corn whiskey in exchange for becoming residents of the Great Tree Village. Since then, another race becomes a member of the Great Tree Village. Soon after, the dwarves brew corn whiskey with the abundant food in the village, and at night, they hold a party with the villagers. Thinking about the fact that they finally have some males in the village, Hiraku secretly asks these dwarves whether there are beauties they like, but they tell him that they only like beauties with beards. Hearing this, Hiraku can only lament that this is the culture gap. 
peace only lasts for several days, and an accident strikes. One day, there are two dragons outside the village. It turns out that Drime of the Dragon Clan often came to the Great Tree Village to drink, causing his wife and daughter to think he was cheating. After learning the truth, they finally feel relieved. When Drime's wife appeared just now, if it weren't for the help of her old friend, the spider in the village, she might have been killed by Hiraku. Unable to ignore this terrifying force, she decides to leave her daughter Lastisman in the village, thinking that it will be best if her daughter can fall into a relationship with Hiraku. Since then, Lastisman has also stayed in the Great Tree Village. Lastisman is so powerful that she always breaks the crops while working. Later, Hiraka discovers that she is very familiar with etiquette and other norms, so he puts her in charge of diplomatic relations in the village. Bezel, the messenger of the demonic kingdom, discovers that the diplomat of the Great Tree Village is from the terrifying Dragon Clan, and he is once again shocked by the power of the Great Tree Village. When Bezel returns home, he makes the decision to send his daughter, Florem, to the Great Tree Village in order to get more intelligence. Florem is frightened by the members on the first day she comes to the village. She sees angels, high-level elves, hell wolves, and demon spiders, and it will be many times more powerful than the demonic kingdom if all races join forces. Hearing that the village chief can defeat the dragons alone, she is even more afraid of Hiraku. She has only one thought in her mind, which is to have a good relationship with the Great Tree Village. Since then, the Great Tree Village has grown rapidly. One day, Hiraku wants to eat the seafood hot pot, so he sends Florem and the diplomat Lastisman to distant seas to trade with a local seafood merchant. Soon after, the seafood merchant comes to the Great Tree Village to sign a contract and build a long-term trading relationship with them. The reason why the seafood merchant agrees without hesitation is that he is frightened by the terrifying power of the village, and the crops in the village have really high quality. After that, another dragon arrives in the Great Tree Village. This dragon is actually Drime's sister Hakurin, who hears that Drime is going to marry his daughter to the head of the Great Tree Village, so she comes to test Hiraku's strength. Most importantly, Lastisman is 900 years younger than Hakurin, and she doesn't want her niece to find a lover earlier than her. After learning Hakurin's identity, Hiraku entertains Hakurin. Hakurin heard that the Great Tree Village has a special game called Mahjong in addition to delicious food, and then she asks Hiraku to take her to play. So Hiraku takes Hakurin, Drime, and Lastisman to play Mahjong together. To make things funnier, they decide to take off a piece of clothing for every loss. In the end, Hiraku wins no advantage in the game and finally strips naked. After this night, Hakurin decides to stay in the Great Tree Village. Hiraku discovers that Hakurin has a talent for being a teacher and puts Hakurin in charge of the education of the village children. In addition, there is one more interesting incident in the village. When the demon wolves are out on patrol, they discover the Lamia's ladies, who offer to submit to the Great Tree Village to avoid invasion. Hiraka discovers that the Lamias have a talent for transport, and since then, they have become a transport party in the Great Tree Village, helping to transport supplies to various cities. At this moment, Yuri, the daughter of the Demon King, is discussing with three nobles how to attack the Great Tree Village. It turns out that Florem is a friend of the Demon King's daughter. She discovers that Florem has not been home for a long time, thinking that Florem has been kidnapped by the people of the Great Tree Village, so she intends to launch an attack to get Florem back. Florem has become the treasurer of the Great Tree Village, and she hears the news from her father in time. With the Lamia's help, she successfully makes the army trying to attack the village flee in fear. To avoid such incidents happening again, Florem takes Yuri and the three noble girls to visit the Great Tree Village, and after learning about the terrifying power of the Great Tree Village, the girls dare not provoke the Great Tree Village anymore. Yuri also learns from Florem that Florem volunteered to stay in the Great Tree Village rather than be threatened. Not only does the village has various delicious food, but also the people in the village are very friendly, for which she stays here. The three noble sisters then offer to stay as Florem's subordinates, and they have long been tired of the intrigue between the nobles in the city. After that, the Great Tree Village returns to its peace. As time passes by, autumn is coming. The villagers begin collecting food for the winter, only to find that even if they fill the warehouse, they still have a large amount of extra food. Hakurin and Lastisman decide to give some of the extra food to their distant parents. When Hakurin returns to the Great Tree Village, she takes back a group of mountain elves. These mountain elves originally lived on a distant mountain, where food and supplies are rare, and these mountain elves almost couldn't survive. Seeing these poor elves, Hakurin intends to let them move to the Great Tree Village. These mountain elves think that they can help the village hunt with their hunting skills. However, any creature in the death forest is more powerful than them, and every time they go out to hunt, they not only gain nothing, but also often get injured. Fortunately, Hiraku finds that these mountain elves can find clay suitable for making pottery because they have lived in the mountains for a long time. In the end, he assigns them to make pottery in the village. 
Soon, winter arrives. The villagers notice that Rue seems to be sick. She has been wanting to vomit all the time, and she doesn't want to eat anything except for some sour things, such as tomatoes. The beast girl next to her guesses that Rue may be pregnant. The villagers are thrilled to learn that Rue is pregnant. From that day on, Rue begins to rest. As for who is the child's father, it is definitely Hiraku. Soon, winter has gone, and Rue's belly grows bigger. Hiraku cares about Rue's health every day, which makes Rue feel very warm. Now the great tree village is basically formed. The maids are responsible for indoor cleaning and cooking. Since they insist on waking up earlier than the village chief, Hiraku has to get up later or the maids will be very tired. The three angels in charge of patrol work are also very special. They are good looking and strong in battle, but they are very lazy outside of work. They are not good at housework at all, and even their clothes are washed by lizard men. Hiraku also uses his omnipotent farming tool to make props, including toys for village children and furniture. Combat training is also held regularly in the village in case the enemy invades. During this time, Hiraka discovers that since Rue became pregnant, every time he takes a bath, some elven beauties will sneak into his room. It seems that these elven beauties want to have babies with Hiraku. This makes him very helpless. One day, a new guest comes to the village, and when Hiraku finds him, he is kowtowing to the statue of the god carved by Hiraku. It turns out that this guest is the vampire progenitor, who is thousands of years old, and can be regarded as the elder of Rue. He heard that Rue is pregnant and comes to visit her. According to him, the god of this world blessed him when he was born, so he respects the god very much. Seeing that the vampire progenitor likes the statue of the god so much, Hiraka decides to carve a copy of the statue and give it to the vampire progenitor. In exchange, the vampire progenitor gives him an expensive piano. Later, Hiraka goes to a merchant and buys a few cheap pianos for usual practice. Since then, the villagers have had another interesting course. The girls in the demonic kingdom are proficient in playing the piano and will teach the villagers to play the piano during breaks. Time flies, and after a few months, the day for Rue to give birth almost comes. To celebrate the baby's coming, the villagers prepare various gifts for Rue. The spider even made clothes for the baby. Hiraku has been by Rue's side, and the two dream about their beautiful future life together. Just then, Rue suddenly feels pain, and it is time to give birth. Hiraku immediately calls the villagers for help, and with everyone's effort, the baby is born healthy. When Hiraku holds the baby, he is very excited. In his previous life, he was lying in a hospital bed because of illness, and he lived his life alone. In this life, he has his lover and his child, and he vows to let his child grow up healthy. The coming of the baby has brought vitality to the Great Tree Village, and the villagers all like this baby so much. As the Great Tree Village grows larger and larger, Hiraku, as the village leader, needs to handle every work and deal, which makes him very busy. If he goes on like this, he can't spend more time with his wife and child, so he thinks of a good plan. One day, he gathers everyone and proposes a new system, which is to exchange the items with the currency they make. At first, they can get three special coins, which they can exchange for their favorite items, whether it's wine, food, or furniture. With the addition of the monetary system, the rules of the Great Tree Village become more standardized. Hiraku has finally become relieved. Soon after, the Great Tree Village holds a banquet to celebrate the baby's coming. The dwarves bring their own special red wine, and everyone drinks very happily that night. Other countries and forces heard that the head of the Great Tree Village has had his own baby, and they begin to prepare their own gifts. The Great Tree Village has become a very powerful force in this world. In addition, many people in this world want to join the rich Great Tree Village. At everyone's suggestion, Hiraka decides to keep extending his territory and build a new village next to the Great Tree Village, which is used to help the homeless refugees. He hopes that he can help more people with his own strength. The villagers are energetic, and they want to pass on the happy life of the Great Tree Village to those who are suffering. This is the end of this anime, but not the end of the Great Tree Village. Hiraku will take the omnipotent farming tool and the hope for the future to help everyone in this world. Instead of resenting the world for the pain he suffered in his previous life, Hiraku treats everyone with kindness. Strong people should not use their own power to oppress others, but should be kind to the world even after experiencing the sufferings of life, just like Hiraku. Well, today's video ends here. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you in my next video. Bye.